Kwaski Tart is now with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Niners essentially seemed like they made no attempt to bring him back. He played, I think, for the vet minimum last year, started a elite 14 games and, and in the playoffs, had the big drop, and the Niners pretty much said, thanks, but no thanks, we're good. Do you think that was smart or dumb? I don't think it was smart at all because, um, you know, the key, the, you know, this is a, a defense where I think Tart had a lot, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of versatility. You could play him at weak side backer. You could play him at strong safety. Um, I think in a pinch, he could have played free, but it's a, it's a vote of confidence for Talanoa Hufanga. It's a, it's a prioritization of special teams with the addition of George Odom. Um, other than that, you know, unless Leon O'Neill from AM or Taylor Hawkins out of San Diego State or Tarvarius Moore shows up and these guys are looking incredible, um, I think they're thin at, at safety. Uh, they're deep on the corner, they're thin at safety, and Tart knew their system and probably wanted to stay. And the price tag was mo- was moderate. And I, I think they're going to be, I think at this point, I, I think at this, this year, they're going to pick up some player. Um, on the cheap, that is a reasonable facsimile of Tart. And we're going to be asking ourselves in whatever week that is, why don't they just keep Tart? Yeah, fair. I don't have a problem with wanting to move on from Tart. He's 30. He's not like an impact player. He's not essentially particularly durable. To me, he's replaceable. The thing is, they didn't replace him. Talano is terrific. I mean, I'm not saying he's terrific. Talano is one guy, but you had both of them last year. If they had drafted a safety at any point, I'd say, okay, fair. You know what? Jaquaski, good luck. They got another guy. Even in round five, they got two safeties. If Talanoa doesn't work out, they've sort of hedged their bets. They didn't. They're all in with Talanoa. And I guess the undrafted free agent, Leon O'Neill. I mean, George George Odom isn't as good as Jaquaski Tart. Had they drafted Nick Cross or any safety in the first five rounds, you could sell me on them being just as good at safety. But right now, I feel like they took a step back. It's one of those weird things because I think Hafanga is a terrific player. <clears throat> and if he plays as well as I think he can potentially play, we're not gonna we're not gonna even notice that Tart's not there. But if Hafanga gets nicked up or Hafanga has some kind of soft tissue injury and now it's George Odom and Leon O'Neill, I, I I think there's gonna be some holes in that secondary and people are gonna be asking, was was it wise to let Tart walk? I just think also they kind of, in a lot of ways, there's an awful lot of people who still to this moment blame Tart for losing that game, which is so ridiculously unfair. They had two complete offensive series after that, and they didn't get a first down in either series. That wasn't Tart's fault. I'm glad you brought that up because to me it feels like even in the organization, they're sort of scapegoating him. Like, you know, it's as simple as him making that one easy uncontested catch, and then they all would have looked differently on – their season would have been looked at differently – to me, that's an, well, that's probably, as you pointed out, it's oversimplification. It's probably flat out wrong. And also, it feels like an emotional. So you let him go because you're emotional. You're still salty about losing the game, and you're incorrectly blaming one person when there's a lot of blame to be shared. You made an emotional decision. That's never good, ever. You, they He caught that, or he dropped that pick on the Niners' own 35-yard line. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't like he he was on, they were on the five of the other team. He were, they were on their own 35, and they never made a first down after that. So suddenly what? They were going to get it at the 35 and just be, they were going they were going to rampage you know, up and down the field offensively when you know I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't you know it's he's not the we all saw the, the drop pick and it was a duck and he should have caught it. but that's not why they lost the game. It just feels like after that, they were so disgusted. They're like, we can't look at you. You're dead to us. And the first thing they did, one of the first things they did this offseason was sign Ray Ray McLeod and give him Jaquaski's number. It was like, <laughs> he's so good. We, we want to close the door on that chapter right now. Uh, as opposed, I mean, that's kind of interesting to me. It's like, dude, it's over. Also, maybe it's a little bit about, um, you know, you know, sometimes it's easier for guys to ascend if the leaders in the room are no longer in the room. So maybe Tart, you know, taught an awful lot to a guy like Afonga. Now they're intent on having Afonga ascend. Maybe they felt like he wouldn't ascend with Tart in the room. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to I'd have to hear their reasoning. There are parallels between the Tart Hafunga transition and the Jimmy Garoppolo Trey Lance transition. It just strikes me that the Niners are much more gung-ho with Talanoa than they are with Trey. I mean, they say the right things with Trey, but Jimmy's still on this freaking team. So, I don't know. 
maybe that's just situational as we, you know, it's, it's, it really didn't, didn't it seem like, what was the quote from Jimmy where he's like, you know, what would, didn't he say something like, I expect this to be over? Or what did he say after he quick resolution, quick resolution, quick resolution. So that means, sounds like I, it was I, a I, trade worked out. Yes. It, it shows like I, I can throw, if there's a team that's interested, make the trade. If not cut me, don't hold. We'll see. I wonder, do you think Jimmy knows where his next home is right now? Because I think he does. It, it's starting to seem like Cleveland, like it, it, everyone's put, sort of putting that together. But to me, again, a, a three dominoes have to fall before this happens. And they can all plan this, but what if the NFL surprises people and it's not a full-year suspension? That changes everything. 